Hello, welcome back. The title of this lesson is called Line Graphs, Part 1. Here we're going to learn how to take a look at a graph like this and interpret the results, understand what it's telling us, and also answer a couple of questions. So before we answer any questions, let's just take a look at this particular graph. It's regarding um, the number of miles that two people ran in a given week. So what you have is, is not just one little line graph, you have two of them. So you have one in blue and then one in green. And of course they're connected, right? And so the way you read this is you can say, well, on week one, we have these data points, and on week two, we have these data points, and week three and week four, and of course they're connected. So if you just isolate yourself to week one, you can see the green graph is Becca's amount of uh, miles. She ran on week one, three miles. And on week one, Jeremy was also running, but he only ran one mile. So on week one, you can immediately see that Becca in green ran more miles than Jeremy. She ran two more miles because he only ran one and she ran three, all right? Now on week number two, it reversed. You see on week number two, Jeremy actually ran more miles and Becca in green actually ran one fewer miles and so on. So the way you read these graphs is you step in time week one uh, read those numbers. Week two, read these numbers. Week three, read these numbers. And in fact, in this week, Jeremy ran a whole lot more than Becca, right? And on week four, Jeremy again ran more than Becca. So in general, Jeremy ran more, Jeremy ran more, Jeremy ran more. It's only in the first week that flipped around, Becca ran more. So what does that mean? Maybe Becca just didn't have much time. Who knows why? They just didn't, you know, they just have different, uh, different, um, uh, schedules and, and, and he had more time to run or something like this. But that's how you actually read the graph. Two different colors, read the chart over to the right to see how to read it. You go up and you read over, up and you read over like this. All right, let's take a look at question number one. On what week did Becca run more than Jeremy? On what, what week did Becca run more than Jeremy? We just answered the question. We have Becca in green right here and Jeremy in blue right here. Here, Jeremy ran more, Jeremy ran more, Jeremy ran more, but here, Becca actually ran more. So what week did Becca run more than Jeremy? It's week one. Okay, that's the answer to question one. Question number two, how many more miles than Jeremy run than Becca on week three? On week three, so you ignore week one, you ignore week two, you ignore week four, and you only focus your attention on week number three. How many more miles did Jeremy run than Becca? Jeremy ran six, Becca ran three. How many more miles? It's just six minus three, right? I could write it down, but six minus three is three. So on this week, Jeremy ran three more than Becca. So on week three, he ran three more miles. Now you might say, these are kind of simple problems, and maybe that's true, but the point of it isn't so much the answers to the questions. The point of it is to know how to read a graph, and especially how to read a graph when you have two or more different lines going on, right? And the real secret to it is it looks very busy, but you just isolate it to columns. Week one, this is what is happening. Week two, you go up, read these numbers. That is what is happening. Week three, you go up this is what is happening, and so on. And so if you isolate it to week one and two and three and just look at what's happening on those weeks, then it makes more sense. And you can use the connection of the lines to get an idea of the trend. You can see that in general, Jeremy runs more often or more miles than Becca, but of course there's an exception to that over here on week one. And so you can use it to identify trends. All right, let's take a look at graph number two. We have the number of students in class over different periods of the day for two different teachers. So the green line like this, it goes down and up and then down, that's Miss Smith. And then the blue line is Miss Tally, it goes up and then down and then up like this. And the way you read this thing is you say, well, each of these teachers have first period, second period, third period, fourth period, and fifth period, same thing. First, isolate your gaze to first period. First period, what is happening? Miss Tally has, you read it over, because Miss Tally is in blue, is 15 students. In first period, Miss Smith in green is a lot more students at 20. Now, in second period, it looks like the graphs cross. They both, both of the different teachers actually have 18 students for second period. But by third period, everything reverses, and the blue graph is on top. Miss Tally has 21 students, and Miss Smith is gone down to 15 students. And then, and so on and so forth. So you go in time, or in this case, in, in period one, period two, period three, and just read up and see what's happening. Read up and see what is happening. You can see that by fifth period, Miss Smith, again, only has 15 students, but Miss Tally has 21. So let's read 
question number one and try to answer the questions. During what period does Miss Smith have the fewest students? So when you're looking at Miss Smith, you only look at the green line. You ignore everything else. What period does she have the fewest students? Well, that's not the fewest. That's not the fewest. That looks to be the fewest. That's not, but these two were tied. You see, these are the exact same number, 15 students. So third period and fifth period, third and fifth period. In other words, both of those periods are tied with the fewest number of students from Miss Smith and the number of students in those periods is the lowest she has during the day, which is 15 students. All right, problem number two, who has the most students over the five periods? Who has the most students? Well, you basically look at the top of the graph. You have the green, the highest place the green gets is 20 students. The highest place Miss Smith and green gets here is again 20 students. But Miss Tally gets to a maximum of 21 students. And again, in fifth period, she gets down again to a maximum of 21 students. So who has the most students uh, throughout the day? It's going to be Miss Tally. And again, she has two different periods that have the same number of students, which is her maximum at 21. So again, we're just getting practice learning how to read line graphs. I'd like you to go through them, really study them. Don't just answer the questions I put, but, but just make sure you understand what the graph is telling you. I mean, what this graph is telling me in general is that uh, Miss Tally has more kids in general because here she has a lot of students and then a little bit less and then a lot more. But then of course in the beginning, uh, in the early morning hours of the day, in first and second period, she has significantly fewer students. So you can read it different ways. You could, you could look at how they're compared together or you can just look and see how their day is looking as far as number of students throughout the day. The green line here, Miss Smith, is all over the place throughout the day, whereas the blue, the blue uh, line here, Miss Tally, looks like she has fewer students in the morning, but then more students in the afternoon. So you can use it to find trends. I'd like you to go through this yourself. Make sure you can understand and answer these questions. Follow me on to part two. We'll wrap up the concept of line graphs.